welcome back to the wellness check I have my little friend over here with me today she might take a nap her name is Sadie Mae and she does come to the office with me and she is a great little therapy dog a little companion <laughs> um, so you might see her kind of walk around today in, in the video uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about brain spotting about what it is and how it works because it just seems like such um, I don't really know how to describe it it's an amazing thing that doesn't make sense when you just talk about it so many times when people think about what is therapy they imagine an office similar to this you're sitting across from a therapist and you're talking about your feelings and while that works for many people, and many people have gotten to a place in life where they have healed and, 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 and matured and done wonderful things through that talk therapy, for a lot of people, that's just not enough. Especially when it comes to the treatment of trauma or life experiences that have just been very overwhelming or scary. And truthfully, whether it's a one-time thing or it was something really chronic that happened over and over in one's lifespan. Brain spotting has been one of the greatest tools to help people move past it quickly um, in a tolerable way and has more enduring results than regular talk therapy, um, medication, even combined. So this is a, another type of trauma therapy that I do and I love it and I've done many, many videos on brain spotting in general. So go back and look at some of those if you want to learn some specifics about brain spotting. Today, this one is just basic. This one is an introduction to brain spotting and it helps. The goal is to help you understand how it got here, why it is an empirically validated and researched um, theory for treatment of trauma and why it's so wonderful. So David Grand is the one that came across brain spotting. So you can find David Grand anywhere on the YouTube. He also has a brain spotting book that is um, just as informative for clinicians as it is for anyone else who might be wondering what brain spotting is like, what, what it feels like, what the procedures are, etc. And is where you look affects how you feel. So let me get into that a little bit. What does that even mean? There she goes. She's going. She's going to snuggle down on the couch over there. Where you look affects how you feel and that is such a true statement. The truth is that every time we go through an experience it gets encoded into our body, into our brains, into our nervous system and we live our lives with all of these experience kind of locked in into our ligamental tissue, um, nervous system, like I said, and brain, not just the brain alone. So what is stored in our body is also stored in our brain and what is stored in our brain is also stored in our body. I have some fun facts that I wanted to um, run by you real quick about the, in, in my words, anomaly of the brain and how amazing it is and even though we know a lot about the brain we also know nothing about the brain we will never fully fully figure it out in this lifetime but here's a really interesting fact that kind of helps to put things in perspective when thinking about brain spotting scientists know that every human brain contains about a hundred billion neurons these brain cells are connected through 100,000 miles of axons that encompass from 100 trillion up to one quadrillion synaptic connections. To put these numbers in perspective, the Milky Way is made up of 100 to 400 billion stars. These cosmic numbers testify to the vast, almost infinite complexity of the brain. I just think that is an amazing statistic to know and how it ties into brain spotting as well. So where you look affects how you feel. Let's get back to that. Here is our visual field, right? It actually extends way beyond the computer screen or the phone. Um, if you're looking straight at my nose, you can probably see what is 
on the wall over here, maybe a picture frame, or you can see a couch over here, maybe a, the flicker of a television that's called your peripheral. And that is also part of your visual field. If you're looking at my nose, you might be able to see a spinning ceiling fan above you, or maybe you have a cat walking down on the floor underneath you, underneath your chair. You can sense those things, you can see those things, they are part of your visual field. So as we go through life, we experience through things. your eyes, go through your optic nerve. Your optic nerve innervates straight into the limbic system part of your brain and kind of gets stored there. And depending on the content of that event of what you saw and how your brain is going to process that event, it either kind of moves along and it gets filed away appropriately or it gets stuck and it is stuck there in the limbic system. So what I do when I help people to find their spot, which is brain spotting, what I'm doing is I'm helping them find the specific point in their visual field that is connected to an event. And yes, that's possible. We do it all the time, every day. So we have in our visual field a specific spot connected to a memory. And when we find that spot, it's a very collaborative thing that we do together. And it's very, it's kind of, um, I'm looking for things as a therapist that would indicate that someone might have found the spot, but also you as the, as the client are giving me feedback. So if we're going all the way from one point of your visual field to the other, we're checking in. We're saying, when you think about this event, let's call it, um, let's call it a divorce, okay? Something maybe pretty activating for someone who's coming into therapy, someone's going through a, a horrible divorce. When you look over here, does it feel more, less, the same activating? When you look over here, does it feel less, more the same? When you look over here, does it feel more or less the same? What about up here? Or what about down here? And we start with these chunks of visual field and then we can really begin to narrow it down. And truthfully, there are many, many, many ways, validated, empirically researched ways to find a visual, to find the spot in one's visual field. But to get someone started, because that can feel maybe overwhelming of, I see a lot in my visual field, how the heck are you gonna find one tiny little minuscule spot that for me or for you means, or is connected to this experience? Well, we get, we get the feedback, right? So if we start over here and we say, are you, do you feel more or less the same about eye level over here on one side? We allow the client to just sit there and think about that divorce for a second. Okay, what about over here? Just for comparison, how does that feel? Is it more or less or the same? And then just for comparison, just to kind of see how it feels over here, what do you notice? And we're getting feedback. So it might sound something like, oh, I feel it a lot over here. I feel it in my body. My body's becoming activated. My heart rate is increasing. I'm becoming sweaty. I'm getting really agitated at the thing that he or she said last night amidst an argument. Okay, that's good to know. So if it's over here, it feels more over here, then let's zoom in. Let's really zoom in. What about if I bring it up a little bit? What does that feel like? Does it feel more or less the same? Well, it feels a little bit less actually. Okay, what if I keep it over here, but I bring it down? What does that feel like? So there's a lot of practice in being able to tie in where you're looking with how you're feeling, right? Even from here, if it's over on this side and it's a little bit lower and that person's like, yeah, I really feel it over here even more. Guess what? There's another way that we can zoom in. Okay, well tell me, does it feel more, less, or the same activation when I bring it closer to you? So now I'm bringing my hand or my pointer closer. Or does it feel more activating if I bring it back here? And really, truthfully, let me just get my pointer out. This is the pointer that I use. It's a telescoping pointer. There can be a really big difference between right here and right here. I maybe moved in half an inch, but that is how accurate brain spotting is. 
So once you, client who's looking to get some brain spotting therapy done, you will be able to get really, really good and adept at finding the spot, learning how your body reacts to thinking about a specific event and looking at specific spots in your visual field. So, you know, I love it when clients say like, oh, like the pointer's falling a little bit, you need to bring it back up or you need to bring it back down. Or can you put it just a little bit closer? Or can you put it a little bit further over here? That is such wonderful feedback to have because literally we want the spot. And I find it, we find it every single time. So I don't want you to be concerned saying, well, what if we don't find it? That'll be so embarrassing or what do we do? We find it every time and it's an amazing thing. And what we do is we, we stay on that spot and as you're looking at that spot and you're thinking about the divorce, your brain will start to what I call Rolodex. <laughs> It'll start to really process in a, in a fast manner lots of thoughts and feelings, events, maybe even history of relationships or family of origin or other heartbreaks in the past or concern about the future. It all starts to kind of roll a dex through kind of at a rapid rate, depending on the person. And that type of processing is what rewires the brain. So what do you do during this time? Are you sitting there and talking about your feelings? Yeah, you could. I have a lot of people that as, as they're looking at the spot and as they're thinking about the things, they're saying it out loud. I'm noticing this or I'm feeling this or it's hard to swallow or I feel my heart racing or I'm remembering this one time, this is kind of a weird memory. I'm remembering this one time that my ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend did this. Okay, great, let it come out. Your brain is rapidly processing all of the connected material associated with that event, what it is that we're targeting in brain spotting. Do we hold the spot the entire time? Do you have to look at one spot in the office for an hour? No, you don't. Um, that's another beautiful thing that if you have really good rapport with your therapist, you say, I just need to take a break. I need to stop looking at that spot for a minute. And that's fine, break the gaze, make some eye contact with your therapy dog or your therapist and kind of debrief a little bit, that's okay. It is all controlled and driven by you. Our job is just to facilitate, support, and be there with you every step of the way. But you get to decide how much you can handle or tolerate, when to back off, when to push yourself. All of that is led by you. As, a, as the therapist, we are attuned to what's going on and we are trained to look for very specific nuances within tone of voice, within body language, something as subtle as a swallow or a little like throat clearing, an eye twitch, um, something that you might not consider a part of brain spotting absolutely is a part of brain spotting. And it's an indication that you're really processing. You are in the right spot, you are thinking about the right things, and all of the juicy trauma healing is happening. So as a brain spotting therapist, these are the things that we're looking for. Um, and it's just, it's, it's from start to finish, it's an amazing therapy to help someone work through something without having to just sit and talk about it week after week after week if that doesn't really help them and to speed along that process to connect dots in a way that you can't really connect if you're just using your prefrontal cortex to find a solution for something or think logically or rationally. It just taps into the limbic system um, in a way that a lot of other therapies can't. And that's why it's so successful. And that's why people look for brain spotting therapists. And that's why people leave feeling um, whole, feeling regenerated, feeling insightful, and feeling prepared for their future as much as they can. So anyways, this is just the little video on general concept of, of brain spotting what it means when you might hear that that slogan that phrase of where you look affects how you feel and once you learn that about yourself your experiences your physiological responses 
it's, it's an amazing connection to make. It's knowledge that I think is really important to have. I hope you learned a little something today. Thank you for checking in with your wellness, and I'll see you soon.